Hey, welcome back. Uh, it's quite a long time since I did a video, but uh, <laughs> I thought I'd put out at least a short one now, because this is uh, quite an unusual task. I have this bearing with a 22mm outer diameter, and a customer that wants it to go over the shank of this uh, router bit, which has 21.5mm in diameter, and for template work, he wants the bearing to be 21 millimeters. Uh, 21.5, so the bearing is the same diameter as the router bit itself. And uh, first, I wanted to take a smaller bearing and put a bushing on the outside that I could machine to size, but um, I figured out that I could grind down the OD of a standard bearing by 0.5 millimeters. Shouldn't uh, shouldn't do any harm to the bearing itself. Um, the only problem was how to hold it while grinding. Um, the, the inner race can spin, the outer race can spin, and yeah. Um, it's not the easiest thing, and we want to machine the whole outer diameter in one setup, or grind the whole outer diameter in one setup, so... Um, <laughs> we, we, I had to come up with something, and I, I machined an arbor with a 12mm shank that goes in a collet, and flat face and a 7.9 millimeter boss here or a recess. So this takes the bearing with a little bit of side plate. The reason for that will come later. And I machined a washer with, uh, with an 8 millimeter boss here that goes into the bearing without any plate. And a screw to keep it all together. I do not have a proper spin fixture for my surface grinder to do like a punch, and punch grinder, but I have uh, the work head of my D-bit grinder, which is basically the same, just a little less precise, but as this bearing is just going on a route a bit, I figured out it would be good enough. Um, this is a ball bearing, two ball bearings preloaded against each other, so it's not terrible bad uh, design. And we can spin it, and it takes collets. Uh, these are the these are the narrow uh, shanked uh, deckle collets with the S20 by two buttress thread. <coughs> and one thing that I did very early when I got the grinder, I removed the location pin and the and the work head spindle, so I can <laughs> spin the collet freely. Helps with adjusting parts in it. Um, I'm used to that. I, we have done that to the grinders at work too. <laughs> As the forces on a deep grinder are relatively low, you will not spin the work in the collet. So, back to the topic at hand, uh, we can clamp the arbor in the spindle, snuck down the collet and spin the bearing on the arbor. And if we tighten down the screw, the bearing gets clamped on its outer diameter between the washer and the arbor itself. So now we can grind it perfectly fine, but you can see that there is uh, some weeble wobble run out. That's the reason why the recess on the arbor itself is one tenth of a millimeter smaller. So I can take the I can loosen the screw and tighten it very, very lightly. And I can come in with an indicator and knock the bearing true. So the OD of the race is true. Okay, that's less than one hundredth of a millimeter. I will change to a more sensitive indicator so I can get it pretty darn close. 
Okay, this is a two thousandth of a millimeter dial test indicator, um, two micron per per uh, division, and yeah, uh, that's like. <laughs> I think we'll only make it worse from this point. So that's uh, that's pretty close to zero runout. Yeah, that, that's pretty darn good. Um, now we can take this whole assembly without the indicator, of course, drop it onto the surface grinder and grind the OD of this bearing down to uh, 21.5 millimeters. And uh, just a disclaimer, I would not do this for a real precision application. Do not regrind the bearings of your Studa cylindrical grinder that way. <laughs> um, but this bearing will go on a woodworking uh, on a, on a wood rod a bit. Um, while it spins at high RPM um, and I want to do a as good as possible job, it's not a, a, a precision critical application. And also of course we are weakening the outer ring and uh, it's 0.25 millimeters per side on the bearing ring so I'm pretty sure that there will be no problems. And this is the general setup how we going, how we put it on the grinder. Um, I have a small toolmaker's vise or screwless vise, and I have two dowel pins in here that clamp the work head on the dovetail, so it sucks it down onto these flat surfaces of, of the of the dovetail. That way, I have something that I can put on my magnet and align precisely. There we go, 21.49. <laughs> uh, grinding with the surface grinder to diameter tolerance of, of such a small increment is, is really hard because down feet is a bit jerky on this machine. Um, it, ha it has a bit of stick slip. Um, I want to add a counterweight so it's always a bit preloaded. That should help against the stick slip. But apart from that, um, for this job this was way good enough. And I also uh, have no fear to grind a bearing journal that way uh, on a shaft. Um, especially if I use my between center chick. Couldn't use the between center chick for this part of course because it's a stub arbor. But the work head of the grinder worked quite well for this. Okay, there we go. That's the reground bearing and that's a brand new SKF bearing, just to compare the surface finish. Um, mine is obviously a little bit coarser, but um, it's close. I used a 60 grit wheel on the surface grinder and um, got a finish that's relatively close to the original one. I could have changed to 80 or 100 grit, but um, as this is just running along a, a template, a wood, a wood or, or plastic template, that's good enough. Um, of course the roundness is nowhere near the original roundness because I'm limited by the bearings in the workhead of my tool and cutter grinder. But apart from that, uh, <laughs> good enough, I guess. So, I hope you enjoyed this quick episode. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.